I'll attend interagency meetings, Chris, where I know for a certain fact, if I don't invite the right people, the meeting will leak. Speaking of leaks, President Trump's speechwriter and architect of the administration's anti-immigration policies, Stephen Miller, sent at least 900 emails to editors at the far-right news site Breitbart between 2015 and 2016. This week, we learned what was in those now-leaked emails. Spoiler alert! racist stuff. Hate Watch, a blog that monitors the far right, obtained the leak emails from Katie McHugh, who was an editor for Breitbart between 2014 to 2017. She leaked the emails to Hate Watch in June of this year for review. She was fired from the far right publication in 2017 after posting anti-Muslim tweets. She now rejects the far right. In the emails, 80% of which relate to the themes of race or immigration, Miller sometimes pitched stories to McHugh, and she sometimes sought out his opinion regarding the direction of her reporting. In the mountain of emails, Miller shared links from white nationalist sites, he plugged the Camp of the Saints, a story about the Great Replacement myth, he pitched a story about how Amazon pulled Confederate merchandise down but still sold, quote, commie flags in the wake of the Charleston church shooting in which nine black churchgoers were murdered by a white supremacist. Miller wrote, Quote, Have you thought about going to Amazon and finding the commie flags and then doing a story on that? It's not a coincidence that in the midst of pushing the U.S. ending trade deal, we're seeing a historic artifact of real America be demonized and destroyed." Unquote. Miller also expressed support for the same immigration policies that Hitler backed. This isn't, this isn't a Stephen, courtroom and Stephen, I have a right to settle speak. settle down. Settle yeah. down. Calm Look, down. Jake. I have a question for you about issues. McHugh told Hate Watch, quote, What Stephen Miller sent to me in those emails has become policy at the Trump administration, unquote. If you want to learn more about how Stephen Miller went from rejecting his liberal roots to fully supporting the far right, here's Deborah Messing on Trump's fiery immigration hawk. Torture is the way to go. Torture is a celebration of life and human dignity. <laughs> That's Stephen Miller, President Trump's senior advisor for policy. He is the mastermind behind the Muslim ban and served as Trump's warm-up act en route to the White House. So who is he? I don't know much about him, but I know that he's pretty right-wing. Stephen Miller was raised by Democratic parents deep in liberal, multicultural California, and it didn't take long for him to reject it all. Stephen's middle school classmates say he's a motivated, serious guy, or at least that he wants to be taken seriously. But the execution isn't always exactly smooth. When he and other students were discussing how to fairly divide the last slice of a pizza, Miller reportedly decided to just slap his hand down on it, and no one wanted it after that. By 14, Miller was a cultural warrior with a love for Star Trek. A friend and fellow Trekkie said Miller called him to break off their friendship. I can't be your friend anymore because you are Latino, he said. Miller continued his war against minorities throughout high school. He wrote columns attacking Hispanic students for not speaking English. Am I the only one who is sick and tired of being told to pick up my trash? And we have plenty of janitors who are paid to do it Miller went on to Duke University, where his regular column, Miller Time, gained infamy for its hardline conservative views. Miller gained the most attention when he made his first television appearance on Fox News and openly defended the Duke lacrosse case. It was always for them about their political agenda, and their political agenda has been from day one to make a big issue out of racism and gender and class warfare. After school, Miller looked for work on Capitol Hill. Following a stint with notorious Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, he joined the man who would take him all the way to Donald Trump, Senator Jeff Sessions. Miller joined the Trump campaign soon after, regularly appearing as Trump's warm-up act at campaign rallies and working crowds into a frenzy with red meat rhetoric. Will you come out and vote for your country and your family and your children? Are you prepared to seize this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity? But he didn't have a national profile until July 2016, when he helped pen Trump's nomination speech at the Republican National Convention. For 75 straight minutes, the longest convention speech in over 40 years, Trump painted Miller's portrait of America, a failed state cratering on the verge of dystopia, besieged by immigrants, rapists, cop killers, and terrorists, despite the economic and statistical evidence to the contrary. After the election, Miller continued to cultivate a key role in Trump's White House inner circle. Along with chief strategist Steve Bannon, Miller is widely cited as an architect of Trump's first executive order 
banning visitors from seven Muslim-majority countries. When that travel ban was later rejected by the courts, okay, Miller so came out of the shadows to lead the public attack. I'm prepared to go on any show, anywhere, anytime, and repeat it and say the President of the United States is correct 100%. But that may be the last collaboration between the two Steves. As Trump distanced himself from Bannon, so did Miller. One White House advisor reported, he made it clear he isn't a Bannon guy. Instead, Miller began aligning himself with Jared Kushner, working closely with Kushner's Office of Innovation. Miller, the man who once wrote an op-ed titled, Sorry Feminists, is also spearheading women's issues alongside Ivanka Trump tackling topics such as family leave and childcare. He claimed that the gender pay gap is a myth and argued that women get paid less because men work longer hours and choose better paying jobs. Miller wrote, the pay gap has virtually nothing to do with gender discrimination. Sorry, feminists. Hate to break this good news to you. A former Republican congressional aide recalls he and his colleagues feeling creeped out a little bit, watching Miller at Trump's campaign rallies. All the anger right underneath the surface just waiting to come through. Like, what's gonna happen when this guy gets the power? Now the world is starting to find out. Are you ready? Hey, thanks for watching Who Is? Did you know we have a podcast now too? On Who Is? The podcast? I'll dive deep into the fascinating lives of the people who run things, whose decisions impact every aspect of our lives. How did they get where they are today? And knowing that, what might they do next? From politicians to the ultra-rich, to military contractors and monarchs and media moguls, I'll introduce you to the reporters and experts who know these real-life world molders best sharp-eyed observers and confidants who observe our subjects as they make the decisions that define our everyday lives. To see more, hit the link or search Who Is on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. And for more of the video series you know and love, be sure to check out the Snapchat versions and our series playlists on YouTube and Facebook.